Hello everyone and welcome to the Alpha Live podcast. It's a brand new month and it's a brand new episode and this time around it's a Cart Masters special. We've got two special guests joining us in the podcast today. We've got Clayton Ravenscroft from the KR Sport team and Ben Barnico, nine times Cart Masters champion to give us some sound advice from his experience in the Cart Masters Championship, so do stick around for that one. If you do enjoy the podcast and you want to get involved in the podcast, leave a comment below on the YouTube channel, leave a like as well, and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any future podcasts as well. If you're listening on Amazon Music, uh, you can't leave a comment, but uh, I'm sure you can like it, and I'm sure you can save it and share it around as well. But until then, we'll be greeting Chris McCarthy as well, who will be co-hosting with me, and we'll be chatting a little bit more about Cart Masters and a little bit about some Formula 1 and some electric carts as well. On to our first guest of the Cartmasters special podcast, we've got Clayton Ravenscroft, Chris McCarthy, joining us as co-host. Uh, guys, welcome to the podcast. Chris, you're obviously a very busy man, so very, uh, thank you for uh, taking your time out for, for joining us this weekend. And as well, Clayton Ravenscroft, fresh off. What race weekend were you last at, Clayton? Uh, don't swallow, Clayton. There we go. Yes, of course you were. Yes, because I was there as well. But uh, Clayton, Cartmasters coming up. You've not raced Cartmasters for a couple of years now, uh, and you're, you're coming back to the paddock. Yeah, it's been a long time, uh, to be honest. The last time I was there, I did it in Senior Max in 2019. I missed out in uh, the last two years, just doing various different things. But um, yeah, definitely the last few years that I have done it, it's been very fond memories. Uh, the last time in Senior Max, just missing out to Barnacote. Uh, and the year before, obviously, in Junior X30, uh, actually winning the plate for the first time, uh, which was obviously a great memory of mine. Oh, well, that'll be that lovely little GP plate you've got in the background there that you won in 2018. Right. But yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but like you say, you did want that other one. But talk us. let's talk about 2019, because obviously that one with the Senior Rotax, that was a, a tough year. You started on pole, I believe, for the final. Uh, but yeah, it was just a, it was a tough old race, that one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's always going to be tough against Barnaco uh, after all the years that he's obviously won it. And you're always thinking to yourself, if I can beat him, then, you know, you've done it. You've done it well. And you've done a good job. Um, and it was really like a great battle all the way through all the races. But just came to the final, just didn't quite have that sort of pace to sort of deal with him. He just did a really good job um, and put on a good show. So yeah, can't say much more. <laughs> It is, it is a tough challenge to beat uh, Ben Barnaco, but like you say, you've done it in the, the past before as well. Uh, Chris, we'll bring you into this a little bit. Now, obviously, you're a big fan of uh, karting. You know, you've gone on, you've done plenty of karting in your career of commentary, and you've, you've moved on to greater things now. But it's, uh, you know, to bring you back to Kart Masters, it's such a fabulous event, isn't it? Oh, I absolutely love it. I never quite got to race in it myself, uh, personally. I would love to have raced in it, but to get to go and commentate on it was really special. It was the first event I ever commentated on live back in 2014. Uh, I always remember it well. Kean Jewis went from the pit lane and, and won uh, in the cadet class, which was a, a race that I think went down in history. Um, but it was a, it's an absolutely fabulous event. Every time you go there, the atmosphere is great, I think. Uh, Nigel Edwards and the team uh, down at Trent Valley do a really good job at, at putting on a, a, an event more than just a kart race, you know, you, you, with all the entertainment you have going on uh, around the circuit. Uh, but there's always a huge atmosphere. I've, I've been there just to watch the event before as well. And I'm sure, uh, Clayton, I could ask you about this. When you come out onto the track, the carts come, when you wheel the carts out, you can see yeah. there is a lot of people around. And I can imagine taking that in on the warm up lap must be, yeah, must build up the nerves quite a lot. Well, yeah, when, you, when you're taking it in as well, when you obviously you push the carts out onto the track and you start off from the grids and like starting off pole position, especially being the first person to walk onto the track, you're obviously seeing everyone around you sort of thing and everything around you just open air, obviously out onto the track. And then on your left, you've got all of the people on the grandstands and obviously your team and your supporters all cheering and stuff. So <laughs> it makes you feel yeah. good. But also, a little bit of nerves uh, come down at that point as well. Do you, do you get like an F1 vibe from it when you, you walk out onto the grid like that? Because obviously, it's the one event that you do do that in the UK. And so it must be, yeah, like you say, it's got to be a cool feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is. And um, there's been as well before, they used to do, um, obviously, you walk, the, the carts go onto the grid and then the drivers walk on separately and they're announced onto yeah. the grid separately. Oh, is that the year when they did that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say that. It was, br it was yeah. brilliant. It was brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, and, and 
starting off pole again from that, you, you walk out the last person to walk out, so everyone's waiting for you. Uh, and that's a great feeling as well, obviously, because then it's all eyes on you sort of thing. So, yeah, it's definitely like an F1 vibe sort of thing going on there. I, I have to say quickly, Dina, thanks to thanks to you, Alpha Live, you know, get, getting to go there last year and standing out on the grid, welcoming the drivers out. You know, you've just seen the top three from the last race go off. You can feel the nerves and you have that moment where we, we run the run the intro just to take in the atmosphere. And I can't imagine. I mean, it's it, when you go and speak to the drivers, they're always people like Clayton. They're always so calm before the race, but I can't imagine what's what's going through their heads. But um, it is one of those races where everything's left out on the circuit as well, isn't it? I mean, I can imagine as a driver, you have to approach that completely differently to, to you know, to a British Championship round or, you know, an IAM Euro Series round, for example. Yeah, exactly. You, you're not looking for a point score so it's like you leave everything out on the table uh, and you you find what a true driver everyone is out there um, and you find obviously who's got the best racing ability and stuff like that just it's not it's never the fastest driver wins it's the most i'd say it's usually the most intelligent um and like racecraft sort of ability um, that wins that sort of race and you always see that's why every year you see a different driver winning and stuff like that because it's never do you know what i mean it's that's the best way i can explain it mm -hmm. well the, the main difference between kart masters and, and let's say the the british kart championships you you're not you're racing with your team but you're not because it's it's there's only one gp plate and you know you you've got to win so you know you may work with your teammates through the, the the qualifying heats or anything like that but when it comes to the final it's kind of every driver for themselves really isn't it exactly yeah it's like a war zone out <laughs> but yeah yeah no it's like for example in, in 2018 uh, race that i did in junior x30 it was like i wasn't even leading the race for a lot of it um, it came down to the second last lap into the second hairpin. Uh, I think it was Reggie Dewey and someone else had a little coming together because they'd obviously one had defended, another had gone in, and then it just became a really tight affair sort of thing through there. And then I just went, thank you very much, swept through. And <laughs> But yeah, you know, that's what I mean. It's just, yeah. there's always a lot of racing and you'll never get someone that's trying to get away because the moment that you do, then the person behind you is going straight in. Um, and it's no waiting around, um, not letting anyone get away. Do you know what I mean? It's a dogfight. <laughs> and I think that's what makes yeah. it a true spectator sport as well. Exactly, there'll, yeah, there'll, yeah. There'll, there'd be a lot of people who would think, oh, no, it's just karting. But Kart Masters isn't just karting. It is, like you said, it is a battle to the to the end really all, all the way and i think that's what makes it so exciting and i think a lot of people would actually enjoy watching it if they'd never watched karting before i think kart is a great place to start yeah exactly you you can go and watch that race and you can go and watch car racing and you'll have a lot more fun in my opinion watching kart mm. monsters um and that's why you always get more spectators for the race because you what you just find how amazing the racing can be and the race craft and stuff like that and things that you never see before do you know what i mean so you get a big moves that you've never seen in a year and you won't see it until the next kart masters so mm -hmm. it's a definitely a, a big one-off event that you will always be shocked to see something new and different every time mm -hmm. I, was, I was going to say clayton how hard is it to take the racing driver almost away from yourself you know if you're in a battle for sixth place you can see the top five are sort of stretching away how hard is it to say right you know we've got to group up and work together here you know because like you said in a normal british championship race you might say well i'll just win this battle take the points and and thank you very much but in that race you're thinking you know five minutes ahead all the time so how hard is it to to be patient in, in a kart masters race i guess you're always thinking two minutes down the road yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you've got to have that intelligent sort of thing to change your mindset mid race. So you could be obviously full attack mode and just keep going, or you could, and then you could get into a position, like you say, where you're fifth or sixth and you see the leaders all battling. You think, right, we need to knuckle down now and crack on with this. Um, otherwise we're not going to be able to win that race. Um, but you can, by the same token, you can always think that the, for the whole uh, endurity of the race it is going to be a battle so you're always going to be there and you can never as a driver get yourself down and think oh, i'm out of the race or whatever even if you're 15th 20th you're always going to make it back there um no matter what because 
defending, battling and all the rest of it. So you've got to have the right mindset to be there at the end of the race. Clayton, do you, um, oh, go on, no, go I was going to say, I was going to say, do you make, if you're starting a little bit down the order and you're with, you know, say a driver you're, you're quite friendly with or a teammate, do you make a plan before the race at all? Have you, have you ever done that to, you know, plan to work Me? together to get forward? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it depends. If I yeah. know that they are okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I only say that because, yeah, yeah, you, okay, you right. No, I've got... I'm always thinking, like, um, I'm just thinking of getting to the front, and there's no stress when you're at the back of the grid, there's no stress because you're thinking you can only go forwards. Yeah. And I'm in that moment, I'm thinking, right, I'm just going full chat, like 100% push yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, like you say, you will. If you're in a uh, championship race or something like that, then you will think, well, he's actually quite fast over there. So if I go and build a relationship with him for a bit um, and chat about, obviously, we're both going forwards. So one of us needs to carve us a line through and the other needs to help push through in order to get the momentum going. So, but definitely, no, at Kart Masters, me personally, I'll always be, if I'm at the back, I'll be thinking, I'm just going for it. I'm going full flat yeah full chat i was going to say because a quick story I, I was racing at genk uh, in formula car stars once and i had a driver come up to me uh, i won't name and shame them right this was before front <laughs> this was before front fairings we both got taken off in the pre-final and he just said look come with me at the first corner i'm creating a gap and uh yeah, let's just say if, there was, if, if there was front fairing penalties it, he would have been gone because <laughs> yeah. we came we came out in the top 10 we started 21st and 23rd and we were in the top 10 it was like went up and shook his hand afterwards i was like i'll buy a hot dog next time yeah. cheers for that <laughs> <laughs> there you go there, there's a clue you can tell they weren't too old then because it would have been a beer if they were old enough for one of those so yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. but yeah <laughs> No, but, uh, you know, Clayton, talking about come I mean, it's been going for years now and we've seen huge names come up from the, you know, the, the roster of, you know, Carters from Cadet Ages. What was the first time you actually took to the track in Kart Masters? What was your first year and what was it like? I think, I think it was, to be honest, I've done so many that I can't even remember, but I think <laughs> it was 2014, like the same as Chris. Okay. Uh, 2014 when Jewis won it. Um, at the time I was obviously in Cadet um as a privateer just me and my dad um and it was my second to last year in cadet so i did 2014 and 15 in cadet mm -hmm. and i just remember that it was a great race even even at the time i wasn't like amazingly good so i was towards the back of the grid um but even from there it was a great race i i think i was even in the b final you know and like i won the b final um and even that was like exhilarating just because like every driver out there, it doesn't matter if you're at the back or the front, um, every driver out there is fighting for their best position. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and especially in, in the cadet sort of thing, you just want to do as well as you can in order to progress. And then one day you'll be there um, yeah. as long as you you work hard enough for it. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's definitely the atmosphere and everything like that and watching the bigger classes and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. the amazing races that you see and you it just inspires you sort of thing to get to there one day do you know what i mean so yeah definitely and do you and do you think as the years have gone by cart masters itself has has grown in a way because like you say it's been going for so long it may have only started with a handful of drivers and now it's grown to this huge event you know 300 plus drivers tons of teams you know drivers from all over the world and i think it's become it's become a bit of an international icon has cart masters hasn't it yeah definitely like if you were to go and race in europe and you have a conversation with a european driver as in a foreign driver yeah and you mention our oh, i'm not racing this european race because i'm doing cart masters they'll know what you're talking about yeah, yeah so it is definitely international um and just with that it's for me is alpha live has done a great job as well in the fact of obviously it's publicized it a lot more and that's why it's blown up a lot more just with obviously little things like the podcast and the streaming and the bits that you do before the finals with the interviews with the drivers on the track and doing the little bits like bringing the drivers onto the track separately with a with an opening and stuff like that all of those little bits makes it even better rather than just another one single off do you know what I mean? Uh, go kart race. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And of course, we've got the we've got the paddock shows again, where the paddock shows were actually born. They were born at Kart Masters last year. Yeah. Wasn't it? That was the first yeah. time we did them, and uh, you know they're coming back this time around. 
one each day. So, uh, Clayton, are you going to join us on one of those? Yeah, I will do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think uh, I always like to have a laugh on the cart track. So you can't ever take it too serious. So, yeah, uh, it'd definitely be good uh, to join in. But, uh, yeah, PFI... I think that the stories that that paddock could tell that we can't repeat here, I think there are many, many, many of <laughs> that, them. That's, you that's, what, that's the stories that go in the bar, isn't <laughs> that's it? The that's the story. The, story the torsion bar yeah. at PF, yeah. The story. <laughs> oh, what those walls could tell. What those walls could tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was going to say, Clay, you, you mentioned there are a lot of drivers that inspired you over the years when you were coming up through the ranks at Kart Masters. Were there, were there any, you know, Drivers in particular that you, you looked up to as you were coming up through the ranks? Um, it's hard to say, like, because um, at the time I was obviously racing by myself. So you'd always watch it and not really know much about the drivers. You'd just be watching and see it. You see the team on the side of the cart and their helmet on. So you never really knew. But I, I always used to watch my cousin coming through because um, he at the time me and him both did it um and uh he was in the junior max and senior max classes at the time um but yeah no even even in cadet like people like keen jewish and stuff like that you you look up to them when you're at that stage of like your career sort of thing you're looking up to them uh thinking oh, i hope i'm at that stage one day um and yeah even like barnaco and stuff like that it's, it's weird because you watch barnaco winning the races and then you finish second behind him to, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, you, you get to that point and you think you've done quite a good job and, but you still want to beat him. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I mean, yeah. the world. Yeah. I, I want him to so, come yeah. back. I want him to come back. Cause I know I'm in my prime now and I want to, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's, that's this, an invite. I think. That is that's an, invite. an invite. That, that, that's a chat. No, Social I want you media. To, Clayton formally <laughs> challenge him. <laughs> Clayton, please formally <laughs> challenge Ben Barnaco to cut masters. Do it, do it, do it. I challenge you, Ben Barnaco, to come race me <laughs> cut masters. Come and take your thrashing. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yes, there Tell we go. You, yes, one, one on one in the lunch break. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we'll the paddock show. We'll get it on the paddock show. Yeah, 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 there we go. No, no, we don't condone any sort of things. Like whatever they're planning. Uh, no, keep it on the track. Keep it on the track. But no, that bit. I think. Oh, that. Oh, I'd watch that. I'd watch that. Yeah, that'd be a yeah. great race. Br bring that yeah. in. Clayton Ravenscroft, Ben Barnaco, one on one out on track. One mm. one lap shootout. Oh, yeah. one lap shootout, maybe. <laughs> maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll we'll see if we can plan it. We'll see if we can plan it. Uh, no, but that's uh, that's brilliant. Like I say, well, Kart Masters coming up very very soon, and like you say, it's a three day weekend. It's a mega weekend. Drivers from all over the world coming together to race, and I just think if you you're not going to be there. Well, where are you going to be? You can, if you're not racing, you can spectate. If you can't get there, you can watch it on Alpha Live. And I mean, it's just the place to be in karting. I'm sure you both would agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But as as a as a previous driver, I still wanted to do it, even after doing one race this season. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm entered up for the senior max uh, class this year, and I'm looking forward a lot to it, um, and just getting uh, stuck in again, really. Mm. Yeah, I've had a look at the entry list and I can't tell you who's on that entry list because it's not public yet. But uh, yeah, I can uh, I can keep it quiet and I can tease you. Such when I'm tease, looking at it. Yeah, me? I can tease it at it and I go, oh, is he back? Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, but I can't tell you who's in it. But uh, yeah, no, it would be great to see you back out there. And Chris, it would be great to uh, have you back at the uh, the track as well. Like I say, can't, can't, can't believe it's been a whole year uh, since we were last there. But yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Likewise. No, it's going to yeah. be amazing. I've, no, I've really had to wait longer. Time. You've had to wait. Yeah, you've had a few years to wait, but uh, there we go. You're finally coming back. You've stopped being lazy and you're finally coming back to race. But uh, yeah. like I say, every time I see you in the paddock, you're always sitting down, eating an ice cream or something like that, never doing what you should be doing. And I always tell you to do some work. But uh, yeah, so you've actually, you, you finally listen now, Clayton, and, you, and you're coming back racing. But uh, Clayton, a huge thank you for taking your time out of your day to, uh, to chat with us. And uh, we do wish you all the best of luck this uh, coming weekend at Kart Masters at PFI. And like I say, everyone, you can catch on the Alpha Life YouTube channel as well. No worries, thank you very much. Well, Chris, as you can say, a great to chat to uh, Clayton Ravenscroft there, but we can chat a little bit more amongst ourselves about the actual Kart Masters weekend as well, because from a media point of view, you know, 
we love the Cup Masters weekend. It's complete. It's completely different to a championship round. It's the one-off event type thing. And, you know, I'm sure we've got our favourite races from that. I know I certainly do. But what about yourself, Chris? I'm sure there's been a race or two that has just been like, wah, from you. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure I think I mentioned it to um, to Clayton uh, uh, and yourself, you know, when I first did it in 2014, it was like my first uh, time commentating at an event. Um, so quite a big first race to take on. Mm. Uh, but, you know, Kean Juris, when when he started from the pit lane, never, ever expected him to, to come through the field. Uh, and I just remember commentating on the race and it got to the kind of final couple of minutes and all of a sudden Kean's name popped up into sixth place and you mm. thought... What, what the hell is he doing there? Uh, and then next thing, um, yeah, and the next thing you, you, you know, there was a group of five in the lead. And as Clayton was talking about, you know, Kian was in this pack where they were going, come on, let's, let's get on with this. And they were pushing each other. And all of a sudden, I do remember genuinely, you could hear the, the people cheering when he took the lead. Two, two carts made contact coming into the second hairpin, kind of pushed each other wide and he just slotted through, took the lead. And you could hear the cheers from the crowd because I think everyone that, you know, didn't have a car out on track, wanted him to win that race. Uh, and it was just amazing. I mean, I remember it, when, when the, you know, I'd go out onto the track afterwards. It was a bit of a one-man show back then. Mm. Uh, and they would bring the, the top three round on the car. And, um, yeah, everyone was just, you know, everyone came to, to applaud him. Uh, even I put the microphone down. It, it was just a fantastic race. And from that point onwards, you knew that was a driver that was going to go go a long way. And even he, I think, even at that age, was was a bit emotional. So mm. there were so many good races that year. But for me, that was one that, that definitely stood out. Just uh, how he never gave up. They never gave up to first get him out on track. Uh, and second, that he, he never gave up in, in going through. So that just goes to show everyone racing at Kart Masters, even if you start from the pit lane, uh, you yeah. have got a chance because the races can be that mental. So, yeah, what about yourself? Well, I mean, well, firstly, I mean, that just shows, you know, the sort of talent that Kart Masters can produce. And, you know, for a driver who would maybe run in a British championship or anything like that, in any club championship, you know, they would have a tough weekend here, tough weekend there. But then they would come to PFI, they would come to Kart Masters and then would show exactly what they've got. You know, it really does show the sort of talent behind that one. But for myself, uh, races that stand out, I mean, for, for me, I've commentated only one Kart Masters and that was last year. Obviously, we'll be back this year as well for 2022. But... Uh, there were a handful of races in that one. I think the Honda Cadet final really shone for me. I mean, Noah Wolf took the win in that one. He took the win in both Iami Cadet and Honda Cadet. So uh, again, another driver mm -hmm. copying Ben Barnacote with taking two GP wins in two different classes on one weekend. But the Honda Cadet final was uh, immense. We were talking the last two minutes uh, of the race and the top 20 were separated by you know three five seconds or something like that you know yeah. there was one big pack all battling for the race lead and uh, honda cadet or, or cadet racing in general is a favorite one of mine because they do that from such a young age and the talent that they've got and the maturity that they show is incredible and when you throw them in a cart masters sort of setting you bring out the best of the best and you really can show who is the cream of the crop when it comes to young drivers coming up the ranks from their young ages but um you know that race the emotion that we saw on some of the drivers you know at the end interviews but a lot of them like to keep a cool a cool head and you know it just shows that you know they're at that young age still and they they don't really know yeah. how to react to you know winning um such an event so you know to see that it, it shows a, little, a bit of maturity but it shows that they've still got lots to learn in terms of you know racing and in the media side of things as well but a, a brilliant weekend for honda another one that spiced uh, caught my eye was the very spicy senior x30 final i mean that saw uh, reggie dewey who was starting on pole you know privateer yeah. starting on pole position for a cart masters final i mean that's amazing and i think your interview with him as well at the start his favorite quote i'm a threat what a quote yeah. from, from someone starting yeah. on pole position in a cart masters final i mean what do you even do with that that's incredible yeah and yeah i mean he he was he was he's inc he's an incredibly confident driver isn't he that's the thing you know and uh he loved i think more than anything he just loved walking out there with his dad uh, yes. which was which was really nice wasn't it you know his dad uh and his mum, who you know everyone loves around the paddock mm -hmm. you know his dad's always been on the spanners for him and i think he really just enjoyed taking that moment in walking out with his dad putting it down on the front row 
didn't quite work out for him, unfortunately. Right. But uh, I think that's something he'll remember for for a very long time. And he did not look nervous at all, uh, no. starting from the front row. I think I think he's just an incredibly incredibly confident driver uh, yeah. overall. So it was a uh, it was a nice moment. It's always uh, good speaking to to the drivers uh, mm. out on the circuit as well. Uh, it's amazing at that ha- at that age how a lot of them, particularly. Um, uh, Noah, who you mentioned, because we we spoke to him in the paddock show, and that was the first time I'd ever met him. And he just came across as a as a driver who, you know, you, you can tell he's going to go a long way. He you know has a great presence in front of the camera, very confident within himself uh, and in, ca- in front of camera as well. And uh, yeah, you you could tell that's going to be a driver that's that's going to go a long way, definitely. But even at that age, you know, some of them not even ten years old, and yeah. they're able to do that. I think I would have ran away at that age. So <laughs> so yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I've probably yeah. done the same as well. Yeah, see a camera, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh no, I don't want to be part of this. I'm off." But yeah, no, it, yeah. it, it does show that. Yeah, there is there is talent out there at such a young age, and they are starting to come through the ranks, which is excellent to see. But again, with uh, with Kart Masters, you know, it's been what well, we're we're at the 27th year this year of running. So you know, plenty nice. of years we've been part of it now. Um, but this year as well, they're bringing in the Water Swift, I think, as a guest class. So usually they'd have the eight classes running. You'd have uh, both the cadets, Honda, Ayami. You'd have Mini Max, Mini X30, Junior Rotex, Junior X30, Senior, and blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah so on, so on. But this year, bringing in a ninth class, uh, but only as a class, kind of a test. Now, the Water Swift, um, interesting class. Now, they raced first time, I think, uh, at the O plate last year, I had the pleasure of commentating on that as well. And I've got to say, they're, they're pretty rapid little cuts as well for, uh, you know, the young drivers. But they're bringing that in this year. I think, how many, I mean, but how many classes can you bring into it? I mean, there are so many. And karting already in the UK, I would have to say, is pretty saturated. There is there is lots out there. Do we, do we reckon more classes are needed or do we just keep keep the ones that we've got? Um, I mean, obviously, the, the only other one you'd look to is TKM, but they do not well, yeah. race at that circuit. It's quite well known. Um, uh, I mean, they put on brilliant racing there when they do go there for the British Championships. There's that very famous uh, British Championship race where it went all the way to the last lap, which uh, uh, Abby Pulling was in, involved in. I think that might have been the one she won, uh, which is a great one to watch back. But um, but that's the only other class you could bring in. I think then it'd probably be a little bit too much. A lot of those guys that TKM drivers that want to race jump seem to jump into an X30 and do it. They've got the festival as well, which is mm. yeah, some guys who do road tax and X30 jump across to do that. It's another brilliant event uh, away from Kart Masters. But um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think that's probably the only other one you could do, right? Uh, I mean, uh, well, I don't think you're wrong in saying that, but I think, you know, it's it's already such a busy weekend. You think we have 300 yeah. plus drivers across eight different classes yeah. racing, you know, and it's and it's three days of racing. Like, you know, Trent Valley Clark Club have done an amazing job in making sure they can fit everyone in uh, to the schedule. And it is a very busy day. It's from first yeah. light, nine o'clock in the morning, all the way to end of the day, five, yeah. six o'clock in the evening. And it's just, it's absolutely manic day I, of racing. I mean, I think it's a good format. You know, you get yeah. the two heats and qualifying two heats, qualifying two heats, pre-final, final. It can seem a little bit when you get to finals day, you know, particularly if you're, you're through to the final, you get your pre-final and your final, that's it. There can be a bit of waiting around, but in that waiting around, come on, there's a lot of good racing to watch, right? Oh, yeah, it, yeah, you know, yeah. And it's, it's not like you're there, you know, there's nothing going on. You know, you get to go out and watch the other classes. I think that personally, as Clayton uh, mentioned when we were talking to him, he enjoyed going and watching the likes of Kean Jewis, or he might yeah. have been racing against him, but he enjoyed going to watch the likes of Ben Barnico, for example. Mm. I, when I used to race, used to love that part of the event as well, going off and and watching the other classes. Ollie Hodgson was a big, big name when I was racing, and that was someone that I looked up to personally. So, uh, And he's gone on to do amazing things since. So I, I think, you know, I think it's at a very good level. I think expanding it from here may just get it a little bit too big. I think at the moment it's at a, a perfect number. It's it's just right, isn't it? It's it's perfect. I think like, so. it's, it's like the third bowl of cereal in the in the bear's house, isn't it? Isn't that, that's right. So there you go. It's, it's, I, 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 you know, one heat would be is not enough, is it? No. Two heats and a qualifying. It, it's a, that, that's a good number, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty solid. The the, for, the format solid. You know, I think it, it really shows as well for drivers. It, it learns stamina. It gives them stamina as well, and it, it kind of a test of stamina. So you know, the fact that they could do three days of all these qualifying, all these heats, and 
you know, try and relax and try and recuperate and try and get your mindset back into it for the finals on Sunday. So, you know, I think it is a it is a great test of stamina as well and patience and yeah. all, all, all sorts of that. So I feel like, yeah, again, Kart Masters weekend, probably a pretty solid one for a driver, even if they're fairly new to karting to, you know, come and watch or you know maybe even take part in but it is uh, it is yeah. open to anyone with uh, you know national karting license so anyone who races in motorsport uk club level karting or anything like that can enter into it as a privateer or as a team member or anything like that but you know again kart masters is just such a fabulous event just with all the organization that's behind it with the those extra trophies as well because it's not just the gp plates that are up for grabs as well you've got the extra trophies you've got the driver of the day awards you've got the bruno ferrari trophy as well which is of course the first corner at pfi now named after the bruno ferrari s's as it goes under the bridge uh the um tony handley trophy as well and the many many more but it, it just shows that you don't have to win it to get those awards if you show you know some incredible talent out there you can still go away with an amazing trophy and i've seen these trophies at trent valley Clark club the names on them there are some big names oh. on those trophies and to get your name on alongside i reckon that's got to be a pretty nice feeling for a young driver as well yeah i mean everyone wants to walk away with a gp plate don't they uh, yeah. but you know i think to to get on the podium or or as you said to walk away with a a trophy that has you know accredited your your efforts for for the weekend mm -hmm. i think that would that that's very special as well some some people are going to remember it, it takes a few stabs at this for, for some to to win it you know it's i think there's a formula to it and i think you know it, you, you don't find that within a year or two so mm. uh if you're racing in there for the first maybe even second time it might just be a bit of a a learning experience but mm. as you said you, you you know if you put in a good enough performance and leave everything out there on the track you might even be walking away with a trophy so don't shoot off straight away at the end exactly. of the weekend basically yeah because the worst is is giving those trophies out and they've already gone <laughs> so yeah um so yeah make, make sure you stick around for the for the presentation because it is always great i think that's one thing that we've seen a lot in past years of course is is drivers not not doing that of course you know everyone racing tempers can get flared you know out on track but you shouldn't bring it off circuit as well i think when you're off circuit and the racing's done i feel like you know uh, you should always come and just celebrate with the drivers who have done you know an incredible job out on mm -hmm. circuit and i feel like we do need to see more of that this year and um and i would love to see it for you know the paddock sort of area around the podium to be you know full of everyone there supporting these drivers who have who have achieved such great things and yes i know some drivers can walk away and feel like oh no i just want to go home and everything like that but the best time of a race is probably at the end you know and you're there celebrating with everyone be a part of the celebration even if you've not won anything because it's still it shows great camaraderie it shows um you know uh, great great commitment to the sport as well and it shows who you are as a person i think that that's uh, uh, an important thing but i mean what is, what's your opinion on that one though chris yeah i mean you i mean i think yourself and henry put on a good um a good podium last year it was there was a lot of people there i was stood right near the back um because that's as far as i could get it was very very busy uh, and one thing you did have was exactly what you mentioned actually there was a lot of people i know some people have to you know people travel from ireland people travel yeah, yeah, from scotland to, so some people got yeah but some people have to shoot off early what, what have you but uh, those who are able to stay um yeah that do soak it in because the, the atmosphere is is brilliant around the around the bar area i think you know pf international is the only track to, to host an fia uh, karting event a world championship and, and that, that's the reason really you can you can get an atmosphere like that uh, and it was yeah i think all the way until it started getting dark the atmosphere was was absolutely brilliant at the circuit so um yeah we i didn't leave till quite late actually at the end <laughs> it was getting actually dark and there was still loads of people there it was yeah it was hard to leave because everyone was there just just enjoying themselves yeah that is the again the amazing thing about cart muscles and again it's all coming up very very soon of course the uh, 5th and 7th of all August this year so uh, again we say it all the time I've already said it once or twice in this podcast but make sure you don't miss it ladies and gents we'll move on now to the new segment and Chris will first talk about well let's talk about the F1 at France because of course Paul Ricard two of the ex Cup Masters champions were on the podium there Lewis Hamilton and George Russell of course both from their cadet years uh, winning the Cup Masters champion but it just shows that Cup Masters is a stepping stone to future F1 greatness really doesn't it 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Lewis won the very first one, didn't he, back in, I think it was 96, and mm -hmm. George winning back in 2010. Um, yeah, you know, and look what they've gone on to do. Absolutely fantastic. A brilliant weekend for the Mercedes team. You know, it shows they've made a, a real step forward. I think that's probably their best weekend of the season mm. now. And from the interviews afterwards, you know, particularly George as well, seemed, uh, you know, very positive as to, you know, the, the steps they could make after this. Obviously, it was a, a shame for, for Charles that he had that spin or throttle yeah. issue or, or something that took him out the race because I think we were on for a really good battle there between mm. between those two. It looked like a real good, another good head-to-head -head between Max and Charles. And I think, you know, we were maybe slightly robbed of that. But, um, you know, that, that's just part of racing, isn't it? I'm sure he'll come back stronger uh, at the Hungaroring. But, yeah, overall, uh, a great race for, uh, you know, particularly for the British fans. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure they very much enjoyed it. But like you say, yeah, it, it was a shame for the battle. But that's been kind of like the consensus for the entire year sort of been. It's been like the reliability on both sides. Not this time. It wasn't reliability, but it was just, you know, that mistake, I think, was more the tyres than anything, you know, was wide into the corner. Tyres had just given up. And then, yeah, it was just round went Charles. But, you know, it, yeah. it, it just shows that things like that can happen so, so quickly. And, you know, when they do happen, it can be, you know, devastating. But like you say, the racing is racing and that's what happens. But um, I think the main thing we can take away from that is that, yeah, Mercedes looking a lot stronger in the later half of this year. And I think the developments that they've made going forward, I think has been it's astronomically different to what it was for the start of the season. Yeah, I mean, you can see mentally that they're in a much better place now, aren't they? You know, from the, the interviews, they just sound so much more positive. They're not quite there yet, are they? No, you know, they no, were no, ten, no. 10 seconds or so back in the race. They could do with making that extra half a second forward, particularly qualifying. They seem to struggle. But in the race, uh, you know, consistency wise, they really seem to step it up. And Lewis himself, in particular, a lot of people were questioning whether he was going to be, you know, second best to George throughout the whole mm. season. You know, the role seemed to be reversing slightly now he is still behind in the championship but he seems to be the one leading the force uh, at this stage but um you know mercedes you know are blessed with a really good team there the restart was fascinating wasn't it seeing uh, george get the jump over over yes. sergio perez that was uh you know a great really a great course. restart it's yeah. randomly timed so um you know i don't don't quite know what happened to checo just just caught looking in his mirrors or sleeping there but uh george was absolutely on it he had that message from toto and uh yeah he wasn't wasn't prepared to go in without a podium there was he so yeah, uh no. yeah it was it was a brilliant race you know a shame for the 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 home fans that they they had but you know a bit of a bad race pierre esteban did quite well moving forward but uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah a shame for a lot of them would have been cheering on Charles, and uh you know a real shame that he had that spin just before the pit stop but mm -hmm. Uh, overall, I think it was a pretty good race. It's a shame that uh, we may not be going back there for the foreseeable future now. It's uh, looking like it's not going to be on the calendar next year and going forwards, which is uh, which is a real shame, really, because it always provides a lot of overtaking. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a shame because Paul Ricard is a fantastic circuit. I mean, in terms of French Grand Prix circuits, I have to say Magna Cor is kind of my favourite on the list of uh, tracks. But yeah, Paul Ricard yeah. has, has just shown we have had fabulous races there. I think the one thing that I can't get over is oh, the lines everywhere. All those blue yeah. and red lines all over the track. It is, it's yeah. very eye-catching when you're in a helicopter looking over the circuit. But from a driver's <laughs> point of view, I suspect it's probably fine. But yeah, it is a shame because yeah. Paul Ricard, an absolutely fabulous circuit. And I think it's, it's hosted some amazing races out over the years, you know, mm. whether it's been in other classes as well, not just Formula One. So, you know, it would be a shame to not see f1 go back there again next year yeah it's just, to be honest it's just hard to hold an event there there was there's quite literally one road in and one road out so yes. to get yeah. you know eighty thousand fans i think they had there at the weekend to get those in and out i can't imagine i've been there a couple of times with a, you know, a few hundred hmm. you know a few hundred fans going in and even that it's it's you know chock a block it's, it's, and it's i can't difficult. i cannot imagine it's at the top of a massive mountain with two mm. roads going in mm. and to get all those people in and out yeah logistically it's just an absolute nightmare of a place to hold a track and there's not much they can do about it so uh so yeah a, a real shame but um you know somewhere like south africa like they're talking about or china would be uh you know would be a great comeback and mm. in addition to the calendar definitely well, Kalami is uh, going to be the the track in question really in south africa uh, the one that they're yeah, on so bringing it back to yeah yeah, so yeah, Kai Lamy and uh, and then also yeah, looking back, looking to go back to China as well. Obviously, mm. Chinese driver on the grid now. Another person who raced at Car Masters several times, uh, Zhou Guan Yu. So, uh, yeah, so it'd be great to see those two come on. Looks like Spa is the other track in question, which would be a shame to lose. But um, but yeah, but you know, we can only fit so many in, I guess.
we can only fit so many in and the, the yeah. calendar is getting so so busy now isn't it they keep saying oh let's yeah. do more let's do more and it's just like drivers and teams are just like well hold, hold, hold on now uh, you know <laughs> we can't do so yeah. much because yeah it may seem simple to you know the the average fan who just looks at f1 and just think oh they're here they're here they're here now but the actual like you say logistics of getting the whole f1 circus from one side of the globe to the other takes uh, an absolute army of people uh, to get that done and like you say using that mm. entire group over well, 24, I think, weekends they have this year. And I think they wanted to extend it's that. 25, even yes. Yeah. It's going to be going to 25, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and the thing is, it was Drive to Survive, wasn't it? It played a big part. Mm. It just kind of opened the eyes as to how yeah. big it is in every single part of the world. So, um, so yeah, you know, there's fans everywhere that want the track and yet that want the, you know, want F1 in their part of the world. And uh, yeah, F1, F1 wants to go and, and visit them. And yeah. I think it'd be personally great to see it go to somewhere like South Africa and, and back mm. to China because it's, it's a brilliant track they have there. Yeah, definitely. So I very much like to see that happen as well. Mm -hmm. But we could talk about F1 till the sun goes down. But of course, this is a Cartmaster special podcast this weekend. And of course, we can look back at uh, Warden Law. Uh, we've just finished the weekend for the event seven, but it was round three for the Rotax and Honda cadet classes there. Uh, and a special appearance as well for the E20 class. Rotax brought two carts from Austria all the way over uh, to Warden Law. So, uh, and I have to say, those carts look absolutely, well, they look fantastic, they sound amazing, and they go like the clappers, but a lot of the paddock, talking to some of the old boys there, you know, who've raced in karting since, well, since they were young and, you know, in the 60s and everything like that, looking at them and going, no, and it's like, well, it's, it's so 50-50, isn't it, about electric carts? It, it is it is you know I, I mean i tested one a few years ago and i thought it was absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. it showed uh, how, how much people you know really didn't get it because i was trying to pull out the pits at wilton and i had to open my visor and shout at this old boy and say excuse me can you get out of the way and he looked at me like he'd seen a ghost when i drove past <laughs> it so he he just could not get his head around it at all but yeah they really do go quickly i mean we put callum bradshaw in one we put mm -hmm. tom wood in one and you know even they got out of it and said that was absolutely amazing and they were setting lap times that you know would have put them on pole position in the yeah. classes they are yeah. racing and so they're incredibly quick carts to drive um there's absolutely no, no reason why you couldn't race them i mean you look at formula e people really turn their heads at that at the start now it, it provides fantastic racing and you can put it bang in the middle of a you know of a city so yeah um yeah. you know yeah, you know, and it, you know, it always provides brilliant racing, doesn't it? I mean, you know, New York had a few crashes, but yeah, overall the racing's always very close. So, mm. and as they've developed it, they they look quite nice now, don't they? They look really smart those cars. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I I think over time people could get used to it, but ultimately everyone loves this sound of when you drive into uh, PFI yeah. and you hear all the cars revving up. You know, I it's. Uh, I can agree yeah. with that. I can really agree with that. You know, you come in, you hear the two stroke and you hear, you know, 36 carts starting a race and it's just the sound is deafening yeah. and but it sounds amazing. But that's also, again, an issue going into, you know, one things, you know, with all the houses getting built up everywhere, you know, cart circuits that were yeah. originally in the middle of nowhere are now seeing housing developments pop up left, right and center and people are complaining about noise now, which I think I absolutely hate, by the way, is when someone yeah. moves into a housing estate that's next to a cart circuit and they know it's next to a cart circuit and then immediately complain about the noise. Like yeah. I, I live in Silverstone. I moved to Silverstone <laughs> in the intention of listening to the noise that was coming from the circuit, wow. not to move there yeah, to, you know, have to uh, complain about it. The only benefits is that we do get entry tickets into things. There's an apology for uh, oh. for the noise. So, yeah, oh, there you go. There's I'm, a turn to living Kim, in the village. <laughs> Kim Bolton have it the worst, don't they? Because they can they only do, do one, yeah. one meeting a, a month. And it means when they hold a British Championship race, it loses a round of the, the, the club championship or mm. they have to kind of convert it into a double header. And they can't even do I don't even think they're allowed to do Friday practice. So, um, no. you know, for them, it's it's very, very difficult um, mm. to, to host. And, and that's such a fantastic circuit, isn't it, as well? I, I absolutely loved commentating and racing there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so tracks like that really suffer. But, uh, but look, I, I don't think we'll ever be fully electric karting, but there's absolutely no, no reason why why we can't have a class at the grand finals or something like that it would be quite quite cool and it opens up a, a new category for drivers to go and qualify and, and represent their country 
Well, they did. Uh, they, they they did race at the grand finals last year in Bahrain, uh, and that was absolutely amazing yeah. to see. But uh, again, um, the the question for them coming into the the UK is that what kart circuits in the UK have got the facilities to host you know these carts as uh, yeah. as a race weekend? Because I believe they take two sixteen volt cables to actually charge a cart, and it's about half an hour, forty five minutes to charge one from a completely empty battery to full, uh, ready to race. But um, it's so in terms of that time, that's not difficult at all in like a race weekend you know you could send out the e20s and then four of the classes and then by that time they're done charge e20s mm -hmm. can go back out again so there's no issue with that but it's just actually just getting the power to them as well so there's yeah. there's you know there's a, a downside to to you know whether or not they could race in the uk um but again plus side like we say we talk about the noise there would be no noise issues whatsoever and i think that <laughs> What struck me when they were going around at Warden Law, Jamie Perilli had a go, uh, and then Daniel Sabula also had uh, a drive in them at the weekend at Warden Law. And the only thing you could take away from them was all you could hear was the tire squeal, and all you could hear was the bottom yeah. of the chassis clouting the curbs. And it sounded, oh, it yeah. sounded awful in a way when they were going around like that. But the actual motors yeah. themselves, they do sound pretty wicked. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you what, great for driver coaching probably because you can hear everything yeah, you can hear that everything. driver does on the throttle on the well not quite on the throttle maybe but on the brake pedal particularly you can hear absolutely everything that's going on so uh, yeah i mean w i remember hearing the electric cars you can hear the stones being picked up onto the tires and stuff mm. like that so it's a hard one to get your get your head around them but yep that we've never seen i've never seen personally 30 of them go around mm. a track so i don't quite know how that sounds just yet but yeah uh, but yeah, they, as you said, it is a bit of a it is a bit of a weird one to to, to get used to, isn't it? I, I think yeah, the, the the paddocks at the moment very fifty fifty on the item. I again, I can c completely understand the pros. I can understand the cons of uh, of it. But it, it it looks like it is possibly and potentially going to be the future. I mean, it is a solution to an issue that is coming. Uh, you know, in in future. I mean, I, I don't think we could have hydrogen fueled carts i don't even think that's even feasible <laughs> but uh it's you know no. uh, but hey ho it, it's a it's a solution to a problem that is going to come around uh, whenever it will come around but it's yeah yeah it's it's going to be there but yeah i mean it is what it is with that one but uh yeah i think uh, what we'll do is we'll uh we'll stop talking about carts and f1 and all that and we'll head over to our next guest We'll move swiftly on to our second guest of the Alpha Life podcast, the Cart Masters Special, and we've got nine times Cart Masters champion Ben Barnaco joining us in the podcast. Ben, firstly, thank you very much for taking your time out chatting with us. You've got a very busy schedule that we are aware of. But uh, firstly, how are we this uh, this day? Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me on. Obviously, uh, Cart Masters is a um, you know has a special place in my in my heart, should I say? And um, you know, just. Uh, yeah, grateful to, to be a part of this show and looking forward to see the seeing the competition this year. Of course, you've uh, you've spread your wings out in motorsport now, you know, racing with uh, your Lexus and, you know, with, with the WEC Championship at the Le Mans 24 hour as well. So, you know, you, you've really grown in terms of your racing and, you know, to come from uh, the kart masters and karting all back in the day, you know, young drivers looking up to you now seeing that you know where you've come from from winning kart masters it shows that it's a great stepping stone for young drivers into the world of motorsport really doesn't it yeah exactly you know i know esports is is quite a big uh, you know big on the horizon at the moment and a lot of people are arguing that that can be a a, a foundation and a footstep into motorsport but i truly believe that there's no better educational school than karting and uh you know the uk is known to be one of the greatest grounds and uh, schools for it so you know i'm i'm a big believer in in karting and especially our british karting and big races such as kart masters mm. but uh when uh, when we're seeing karting as well as a whole and you know watching it back and through like the years of where it came from and what it came to be uh, there's been a lot of drivers who have looked at you and thought you know there's a driver who i want to you know become in in its future times but there's a lot of drivers who out there who are still racing to this day who still feel like you know i could i think i could challenge uh, ben barnico you know we were speaking earlier on in the podcast we had clayton ravenscroft on and uh, clayton who racing in the senior rotex class i think he formally chris you can correct me if i'm wrong here i'm pretty sure clayton formally <laughs> challenged uh, ben to uh, to race him at uh, kart masters once again so i think you've uh, you've got a challenge there so ben are you going to come back for uh, 2022 and you're going to race uh, at kart masters are you gonna to race this year um 
unfortunately i'm not going to be there this year i'm racing uh, racing in america at road america um ah. but i mean you know i'm uh, i'm happy with nine i'm happy with the record but i feel like there is a there is an itch that needs to be scratched to get number 10 and going to door did it so uh i wouldn't there say i'm out just yet there we go well there you go well clayton we've we've uh, put your message out there so hopefully ben uh, ben accepts your challenge but chris will bring you in of course uh, you've uh, you've commentated on ben at uh, the um the Cart Master Championship, of course, and uh, I think you two go way back, I think, in karting as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it was great to see you, of course, at Le Mans this year. Um, it just shows yeah, how far you've come and uh, great to see you throughout uh, Cart Masters as well. I want to go back, if we can, to, to some of your earlier uh, Cart Masters victories. Uh, I know you, you did it a few times and then went on to win it. Just tell us a little bit how it was learning you know the the formula of cart masters and then eventually applying that to go go and get your first win um yeah you know i think cart masters is always known as one as you know the, the stereotype of it is a very long weekend you start testing on thursday you know most of the british championships and club meetings are two day or you know the british championships three days meetings and uh cart masters being four days you know you kind of a lot of people are like, oh, it's so boring, you know, it drags on. But and that that adds a challenge in itself because it's easy to take your eye off the ball. So I and, and you know, kind of almost relax a bit too much in your downtime and and not have your head in the game. Especially you know, we all know what youngsters like out playing with the mates. There's a lot of time to kind of burn your energy up and and take your eye off the job. So I guess that'd be something that I learned from my earlier cart masters and um, and you know, at the same time also knowing how much the whole weekend matters, the format of it being, you know, two heats on Friday, then another two heats on Saturday. You know, you've always got to be right at the front and and getting good results in all those to put the message out to your competition that you're, you know, you're here to race and here to win and also mm -hmm. make sure you're starting up front because with it being just that one race, winner takes all, it's quite hard to come back from, uh, although I have come back a couple of times from slightly further back on the grid, it is, it's hard to do. So, um, yeah, that's another lesson and I, also, I'd say um, just don't give up. Um, so the first, I did Cart Masters four times before I actually won my first title. And uh, and in 2010, when I won my first title, that was my first year racing with Mick Barrett Racing, who I actually have won the majority of my Cart Masters titles with. And, and that year, I, I, I remember clearly, you know, even though I was only 13, I remember clearly saying to Mick Barrett, I don't want to do Cart Masters. I always have bad luck. Stuff always goes wrong. I don't want to do it. And he was like, no, 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 do it. You know, you, you're having a good year. You'll be all right. And sure enough, that was the first time I won it. So, you know, just uh, never keep up and, and keep digging. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say, you know, you, you did some racing uh, abroad in, in sort of WSK and, and CIK. Do you think doing that at all uh, helps add up some Cart Masters titles? Because they're, they're quite long weekends as well. Do you, do you think that helped at all? Yeah, definitely. It, it does help. But um, in all honesty, the majority of my Cart Masters titles have come since I've been away from karting and primarily racing cars um up until that point so i won my first three whilst i was still active in karting so i did my first one in 2010 in kf3 second one in 2011 third in 2012 so those were my last three years of karting where i was kind of you know in my prime and that's when i started doing the wsk stuff but the majority of them actually came uh following that when i was racing in cars so yes it did help but it wasn't the the be all and end all i, I don't think that people who have european racing experience are an advantage of of those competitors who don't have it no i think that's and, a great way of put it, putting yeah, it yeah i was, was um, going to say yeah i was going to say quickly dj jumping in you know doing cars and then jumping in not being active in karting you know how do you how do you get back up to speed so so quickly mm -hmm. uh, and go and win something like kart masters because you know karting is all about form isn't it really you can't you know to get in a cart and go quickly usually it takes a few weekends to get out back up to speed so to be able to jump in and do a weekend like that where the sessions like you mentioned are quite far apart yeah how on earth do you manage to do it um, well, I'd always say, you know, I prepared as well as I can. If I knew I was going to do it, I, I knew the challenge I was taking on and I'd, I'd always make sure that I did plenty of testing and, and generally I'd try and do one club meeting always before doing cart masters because it's amazing when you race cars, there's no, you know, the wheel on wheel action and the, the closeness and competitiveness of the racing just isn't quite as, as sharp and as fierce. So that'd be one thing I'd do and lots of testing, but to be honest, is with it being a long weekend, um, that in some ways helped me because. I would always be there on pace you know i'd like i said I'd always make sure i did a lot of testing and then i'd kind of ease my way a bit into the weekend so you know you got a couple of heats on friday and you, you know you 
having a bit of time off also helps like think right well what could i have done better how could i improve how can we improve the car what could i have done better and i think you know that actually being a longer weekend really helped me to make sure i was at my best come the finals against the people who like you say are in it week in week out because you know that was a big challenge not only for me but in terms of the car and the equipment you know i just basically get stuff for the weekend whereas all the guys i was racing against were using their engines week in week out they knew exactly what they had so uh yeah, being a longer weekend definitely helped me. And I think if it had been a shorter weekend, it, it probably would have been harder for me to be as successful as I have been at the event. Would you say that uh, for a lot of drivers, you were saying there, you know, using the engine too much and, you know, being at karting circuits week in, week out. Do you reckon taking a step back and, and just seeing what's going on is, is a good strategy for some drivers? Because I look at some younger drivers in, in modern karting right now and it's, uh they're racing here there here there everywhere and it's there's no stopping and you think oh, at some point when does it come a little bit too much for a driver yeah that's it I, I think it's a fine balance and it probably comes down to individuals in all honesty um some people need to be in a car every week just to you know keep building their skills and not having time away so they can keep progressing up you know progressing their skills and keep keep their progression linear you know but um i think from my personal experience of just coming back into the one event, it's nice that you can put all your focus and all the attention of, of a kart race on that one single event. Whereas, you know, I could be out testing at PF, for example, for the race, one of the people are doing British or European championships, which did help me. So I think there is, like I said, there is a fine balance to, to be had for sure. And um, that can come into some people's advantage against, you know, there's kids these days racing in European championships, British championships, UKC, like say every week, there's other people who are maybe just doing British championships or club meetings and then just cart masters. And I feel like those people can always use their downtime, as you rightly said, to, to focus on winning big races that they, they, that they want to, you know, they're not at a disadvantage, I'd say. No, definitely. And like we say, when we talk about cart masters, it is, I would say it's probably the biggest karting one-off event in the UK. It's definitely the one that drivers want to be at. And like you say, you've you've won it nine times. It, say, it took you four uh, years to actually get your first win. And again, going into it, there must be one of those kart masters that shone from most of them. I mean, what can you tell us about one of them? I mean, there's got to be one that you think that ha that was the best year for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there is, and to be honest, it's it's not too hard for me to choose. The, the The best one would be 2015, the first time that I did the two GPs in one day. Um, up until 2015, I'd only won three titles. Um, to get the record wasn't anything that was on my radar at all. Um, and I just kind of fancied coming back and, and doing it in X30. You know, the X30 grid at the time was very competitive. There was... Ollie Hodgson, Mark Litchfield, Danny Curl, um, you know, a lot of solid, solid drivers. Um, and I was racing Formula Renault Euro Cup, which wasn't a too busy season. So um, I just wanted to come back and, and do it. And mm. the plan was always to do it in X30. And in that year, I just happened to be coaching a little bit for KR Sport. And um, Ash Orchard, the owner of that team, was like, I really want you to do it in Rotax. And I said, I can't. <laughs> I'm already doing it in X30. And he was like, why don't you just do both? I was like, well... I guess so, like, it's not a bad idea. Um, so, you know, ended up doing the two classes. And in, in road tax, I had a pretty smooth sailing run, to be honest. I won every heat, um, which kind of wasn't to be expected because I hadn't really prepared a, at all for road tax. I just rocked up at the race weekend and got in it and had a go. Mm. Whereas X30 had, was the one that had been doing all the testing, kind of getting back cart fit and, and getting the cart and everything dialed in. That's the one that I expected to try and... Uh, just jump in and go but Ash KR did a phenomenal job of giving me great equipment dominated that 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 one which was which was good uh, with my, my mechanic Joe Bullen who's now Aventus Engines so you know that was very mm -hmm. special for me and him um, and then X30 I had to start a little bit further back on the grid start 12th but the, the thing that made it so special was just that so I did the Rotax I won that and then I was kind of like oh I've won one now you know there's no yeah. pressure I kind of I wanted to come back and win one um, done it and then I went out in X30, which was the race after. So I remember one road tax, did my parade lap, uh, went to the bathroom. It was like, right, I've got another one to go now. Um, so I jumped in it, started 12th, and, and off I went. And, and had a great race, was really fast, got to the front. I remember just pulling a bit of a gap. And it's kind of, I got to the front, and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm like winning, you know. I was just so in the zone, got there. Yeah. And then, yeah, took it home. And the, the first time I did the double, and that was what then really encouraged me to go for the record. And... Uh, 
and keep keep pushing and keep coming back. So um, yeah, that was the special one for me in 2015. Yeah. How, well, as, how was it switching okay. between the classes? Sorry, yeah. How, how was it? You know, because they, they drive quite differently. Rotex X30. Yeah. One one pulls out the corner very very fast. How, how was it jumping from one into the other? I mean, did you have to adapt driving style at all, or was it was it fairly fairly the same? Yeah, it was it was definitely an adaptable driving style. And the biggest probably the biggest thing was well, like you said, they do drive very differently, but it was the tires. So with yeah. Comets, you can push very hard and. You know, with a Comet tyre, you can kind of make any driving style work. You can either be really smooth or quite aggressive. And it certainly with the tyres that we did it on back then, you know, just just remembering back, you could you could sort of push it however you wanted, which probably made it such a competitive class because so many people had different styles and they all could kind of get it to work and everyone had the same sort of pace at the end of the day. Um, and then you got back in the road tax and with the Mojos, you had to be really smooth and make sure you didn't overheat them. So that was the biggest challenge. And also just when you were racing, so with the Rotax, again, if you if you went to overtake someone, you had to make sure you didn't go in too hard and slide the tyres. Just a silly thing, like you'd overtake someone and your natural instinct is just to whack the throttle down once you've done it. But you do that in a Rotax and the thing just dies. Um, <laughs> there's a few times over overtake people and you're like, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was that. Uh, so it was it was a few fine things, but again, like making it, being on such a long weekend and having a lot of opportunity to improve on these things really helped and uh yeah it was it was tough but i think you know again because you've got time over the weekend you can you can do it there's plenty of time to think about it yeah yeah i um, can imagine i can't imagine how it must have been trying to calm down from the you know the, the energy of just winning a race and doing yeah. a parade lap and then just it, on your parade lap everyone else is celebrating you're just thinking right don't don't slide the tires too much you know just yeah. looking at looking at the track that's basically what you're doing <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> it must, it. must have been well, bizarre yeah, no, it really was, but I'll never forget, like like I said, I, I won the road tax one. I went to the bathroom, I came out of the bathroom, and I'm like, oh, I've got to go do it again now. I'll like, try and get another one. It was, just, it was just surreal. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have, like I say, great equipment. That year I did it with Chaos Sport on the, in the road mm. tax. And I raced with Zip um, on a Birrell ART in, in uh, X30, and Zip yeah. was the team that I raced with my last two years of karting in the – um, you know, so it was all very special how it how it all happened, and uh, yeah, it was was super grateful to to, keep, to be the first person ever to do the double. So did, was there was there, did, did you have to do the suit swap as well? So you say two different teams as well. So it's like quickly new suit, all of that, change outfit, all of that, and then back into the car, do it all over again. But yeah, it is it is a great achievement, and I think you've you've proved it to so many uh, younger drivers as well because we are seeing younger drivers now competing in two different classes. I mean, last year in 2021, Noah Wolf took the Honda Cadet and Iami Cadet GP plates in the same weekend. So, you know, replicated your um, your role, but in the Cadet classes as well. And there's another driver who's coming up wanting to do it in both. I think Brandon Carr this year is going to be doing it in both uh, Rotax and Iami, as well as Dan Ginchard, who now races in British Formula 4. He uh, attempted to do it in, in Junior Rotax and Junior X30 as well. So, you know, you've definitely, I think, been an inspiration to a lot of younger drivers coming through in kart masters you know trying to replicate that and uh, some being successful as well yeah no that's you know it's great to see that i was able to do that because um uh, you know doing it i did it once i'd already moved to cars and uh you know i remember being young myself and racing cadets and looking up to people such as oliver Rowan, jack harvey and and thinking i want to be like those guys one day and you know, watching those guys win really motivated myself to try and to try and win and try and be better and, and be like them. So, you know, if I if I can offer that inspiration and and try and help push the younger generation just that little bit to to achieve these things, you know, I'd, I'd take a lot of pride and and be pr very proud of, uh, of of doing so. And to see Noah do it was was great. In all honesty, like, um, yeah, it was cool to be the only guy to ever do it, but be able to see someone else do it and at such a young age as well. You know, it's great and because of it you know i now watch and follow noah he's he's having a great year in in the mini max class he's, he's dominating you know um it's great to see and yeah hope hope wish him all the best for a successful career just hope he doesn't do too well at cart masters and come off <laughs> yeah you don't you don't like you say if he gets close is it, if he gets to like let's say eight or nine are you gonna have to come back no matter how old you are at the time you're gonna have to come back and think i'm gonna have to go for 10. Well, that's it. I want to try and do it while I'm young before I get to say, do a Bobby game. Come back. Yeah. Come back in your 40s. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that'd be excellent. Yeah, I, don't want to do my... I laugh and joke with Michael Simpson, actually, because obviously he had the record before me and he's, you know, he left it too late to come back. So uh, yeah. you know, taking a bit of advice from him might be better to do it sooner rather than later. 
yeah 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 and what would your advice be to you know and we've got a lot of drivers i'm sure watching the podcast that, that have looked up to you that, that are going to be at cart masters i know you do a lot of driver coaching so you probably don't want to give too much away but uh, what would your you know advice be to to drivers that are you know going there maybe for you know look, looking to try and get off to a good start maybe for the first time or, or looking to win it for the first time um yeah my one my one thing uh you know single biggest piece of advice that i could give that helped me be so successful at the event is just never give up you know it's 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 a hard week it's a long week so it's easy to kind of lose sight of what you're there to do uh, but you know just being determined and and you know i always believe that the person who wants to win cart masters the most will win it the most i just believe that i went there with with more you know belief and more encouragement than than anyone else i was racing against to go and win um you know rightly or wrongly i don't know what other people were thinking but i just know how badly i wanted it to, mm. to you know a to win and b to get the record and um you know there's a couple of times where i nearly gave up first first example being 2010 which i already mentioned with with mick barrett racing um and then one of my other greatest cart masters 2017 when i started 18th on the grid i was like oh this is done i'm never gonna win this and, and mark rose my mechanic at the time was like what are you doing like why, why are you giving up and had a you know real pep talk to me and uh you know we all know mark's a bit of a legend of the sport yeah. and he gave me a real yeah. kick up the backside and you know sure enough i won it from 18th <laughs> in one of the most dramatic last laps of car masters history um <laughs> And, and yeah, it was it was it was phenomenal. So uh, I really just genuinely believe that the person who wants it the most will win. So uh, you just got to drive your heart out all week, every time you hit the track, and, and anything's possible. Yeah. That and is, do you I've... think it helps? You mentioned you were doing Formula One Euro Cup there. Do you, do you think it helps? You know the, the schedule of it because doing Formula One Euro Cup that's quite a slow schedule as well, isn't it? You're not on track too often. So do you think this is a good preparation for for something like that, or even like you were doing earlier this year, the 24 Hour of Le Mans, where you you only get one race? Yeah, definitely. Um, cart masters, you know, people say, oh, you're not on track a lot. The, the, the sessions are very spread out. But if, if people are aspiring to go and race in cars, that's very much a good taste of what a car, race car weekend's like. Because a lot of the time you get two, maybe three practice sessions and you're into qualifying and one or two races. So, um, you know, it, it definitely is. It, it couldn't be any close to, to car racing, as you rightly said, Chris. So, um, yeah, it's good taste and just shows you that you can't give up and you've got to keep that end goal in sight because it's easy to get distracted and, and, and lose that motivation. Mm, definitely. I think there's some proper sound advice that you've uh, given in this sort of podcast. And I'm sure hopefully a lot of young drivers will watch the podcast and, you know, listen to what you've got to say and, and put it into practice because, of course, Cart Master is coming up very, very soon in the year. But, Ben, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to talk to us. Uh, we've, we've surpassed our time limit already. We've been chatted way over it. But uh, uh, thank you so much for taking your time out your busy schedule. And uh, we do wish you all the best in your uh, coming races and for the rest of the season. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, best of luck to everyone racing at Car Masters. Hope, hope you all do well and uh, don't get too close to my record. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Ben. Thanks. <laughs>